Nucleophilic addition to carbonyl is the key reaction of aldehydes and ketones. When you look at the carbonyl group, this makes perfect sense. The oxygen is more electronegative than carbon and pulls the bonding electrons toward it. This leaves a partial positive charge on carbon, and the electron pair of a nucleophile is drawn to that positive charge. In terms of writing out an equation, it looks like this. The nucleophile adds to form a tetrahedral carbon that has four things bonded to it. The oxygen has a negative charge, which in a second step picks up a proton from an acid of some type to form the product. This 1-2 addition leaves the nucleophile and a hydroxyl group attached to the carbon. When the nucleophile is an alcohol, that equation looks like this. The electron pair from oxygen forms a new bond with the carbon as the pi bond breaks. The negative charge is formed on oxygen, while a positive charge is formed on the oxygen from the alcohol. Proton transfer to the oxygen of the carbonyl group, and proton loss from the oxygen of the alcohol finishes the addition. In practice, this takes two steps. The compound this form is called a hemiacetal. Hemi means half, and we're really halfway to forming an acetal. The acetal itself has two alkoxy groups attached to that carbon. This reaction works, but it's often fairly slow. It can be catalyzed using base or acid. The base catalyst produces a better nucleophile, which increases the reaction rate, while the acid catalyst protonates the carbonyl to make it more reactive. Let's take a look at the specifics of the base catalyzed addition of an alcohol. Then we'll look at acid. This is a two-step process. The alkoxide adds as a nucleophile. To form an intermediate, it needs a proton. Because this is done in an excess of alcohol, alcohol itself is typically the acid, which you see regenerates the catalyst. This fits our definition of a true catalyst, something that makes the reaction faster but is not consumed in the overall reaction. The equilibrium is pushed to product by using a large excess of the alcohol. So with base catalysis, the reaction is very straightforward. A nucleophile, much stronger than the alcohol itself, adds to carbonyl, and then rapidly a proton is transferred from a molecule of alcohol to form the hemiacetal, regenerating the catalyst in the process. Now I'll take a look at the acid catalyzed reaction. You'll see it's significantly different Protonation of the carbonyl oxygen by some acid it makes a compound that's much more susceptible to reaction with nucleophiles because it has a full positive charge. Under these conditions, the addition of a molecule of alcohol itself is rapid. The pi bond is broken, which eliminates the positive charge on the oxygen. But as the alcohol adds, it creates a positive charge on the oxygen from the alcohol. Finally, a reaction with base the conjugate base of the acid we started with removes the proton from that oxygen to make the hemiacetal. Notice that whether we're using a catalyst or not, these reactions are reversible reactions. I'm using equilibrium arrows for every step. And again, it's worth pointing out that the acid that is used in the beginning is regenerated at the end, so it is a true catalyst. However, under these acidic conditions, there's an interesting twist to this reaction. We have just described the formation of what is essentially an alcohol in the presence of acid, and we know that acids protonate alcohols to catalyze reactions. Take a look. Protonation of that OH of the hemiacetal, just like we have for alcohols, is a reversible reaction that causes the formation of a good leaving group, water. So, just like for alcohols, we see the loss of water to form a carbocation. This carbocation looks a little odd because it has an electronegative atom attached to it, which you might think is destabilizing. But when we look closer at it, we see that that heteroatom has a lone pair of electrons that it could share with carbon to form a second resonance structure. This resonance structure is especially stable because every atom has a filled outer shell. Unlike typical carbocations that only have six electrons around carbon, this carbon has eight electrons around it. The oxygen does too. So what I'm saying is this carbocation is especially stable because of resonance, making a especially stable resonance structure. 
which means it's especially easily formed, which means this loss of water from protonation of the hemiacetyl happens rapidly. But carbocations are very reactive and a molecule of alcohol adds. So in a reversible reaction, we see that we've formed an intermediate that is protonated. The only thing that remains to form stable product is loss of a proton. The conjugate base of this acid that was generated in the first protonation step that I've shown here is available for removal of the proton in the final reaction step, leaving us with an overall reaction picture that looks like this. The final product is our acetal. So the acid catalyzed addition of alcohols to aldehydes and ketones is complicated. It's a simple 1-2 addition to form a hemiacetal which then behaves like an alcohol. And in a series of steps that is essentially an SN1 substitution reaction, the OH is transformed into a good leaving group, which makes a carbocation that adds another molecule of alcohol. And proton loss forms the acetal. So when we want to make acetals, we use acid catalysis. And acetals are formed in very high yields under these conditions. It's not possible to make hemiacetals under acid catalysis because the hemiacetal continues to react. In contrast, with base catalysis, we make only hemiacetals, not acetals, in a simple two-step reaction that produces very high yields of hemiacetals. Whether you want to make hemiacetals or acetals dictates the type of catalysis that you'll choose to use. In either case, you can make very high yields of desired product.